everyone, this is my second semester of Current Issues 881. My first semester I did my presentation on climate change impacts on sea turtle sex determination. This semester I am studying sea turtles again, but focusing on the plastic pollution and the impacts that pose on them. Our position paper reminded me the importance of this topic for all wildlife in general, but especially marine life in particular. I hope that you find this presentation informative and eye-opening for the need for wildlife conservation and management on these issues that they face. For an introduction on this topic, marine debris are any man-made item, however, are commonly plastic which ends up in the ocean regardless of its source. Plastic found along coastlines cause harm to hatchlings through ingestion, entrapment, and or entanglement. The issue of plastic ingestion has been documented in sea turtles for decades. An estimated 4.8 to 12.7 million tons of plastic waste enters the marine environment annually. This contributes to a global estimate of 5 trillion pieces of plastic in surface waters of the seas globally. Plastic pollution has become one of the most critical concerns for wildlife in the 21st century. Marine vertebrates and the interactions that plastic pollution has on their health and success has been recently considered a research priority. This topic is important and relevant as research is vital to show how it can be applied towards management and mitigation for minimization of plastic pollution on marine diversity. So to start, the first article that I will be reviewing is a quantitative analysis linking sea turtle mortality and plastic debris ingestion by Wilcox et al. 2017. The study took place in Queensland, Australia, where 246 sea turtles stranded either dead or alive. However, the alive turtles subsequently died following time period of rehabilitation. The study looked at the relationship between the amount of plastic ingested and the likelihood of their death. The study utilized databases for necropsies, as well as records extracted from a strandings database. The overall average size of turtles was 42 centimeters in measurement of CCL, or curved carapace length. These turtles ranged from hatchling to adult, but majority of them uh, were juveniles for the study. There were 160 greens, 52 hawksbills, 30 loggerhead, one flatback, one olive ridley, and two unidentifiable deceased turtles. The first figure I included from this study was figure two, which was a comparison between coefficients for cause of death that utilized a linear regression of debris counted in the GI tract on the cause of death. The abbreviations stand for unknown, known and not plastic, indeterminate, and known plastic. The coefficients are from the best model, which are based on cause of death, species, and age class. The error bars show standard error, and letters denote coefficients that are statistically different, are different with a p-value less than 0.05, based on pairwise tests with multiple comparison correction. The graph depicts that known plastic cause of death were significantly higher than the other causes of death shown. The next figure I included was from, this, from the study was figure 3, which includes slope and significance of the relationship between probability of death due to plastic debris. Specifically, this chart analyzes the best model for the relationship between the number of debris items in the gut and the probability of death to debris ingested, which include the ratio of the count of items to the curved carapace length and the age class. This data has a significantly positive slope across all simulations. Lastly, I included figure 4 of this study that includes the probability of mortality due to plastic ingestion with increasing plastic load in the GI tract. The results of this model are based on median curved, curved carapace length for turtles in the, in the data which was 43.5 centimeters, as well as the most common age class of ju juveniles. These two models shown are both based on Monte Carlo simulations. The first model assumes that the cause of death was correct, leading to the turtles with plastic ingestion and assigns probability in the interval of 1 to 1, shown in green. The second model assumes that the cause of death was incorrect, leading to the interval 0 to 1, shown in blue. For each of these models, the median is the solid line with the extreme values um, as dotted lines. The graph displays that in both scenarios, the increase in amounts of plastic ingested also generates an increase in cause of death. 
The study stated that, that by evaluating the robustness of the results, it was found that tr treating indeterminate and plastic cause of death similarly and repeating the Monte Carlo analysis and subsequent predictions resulted in qualitatively similar results, however, with a broader uncertainty. In conclusion, this study found that plastic ingestion cause of death had more concentrations of plastic debris found in the GI tract than turtles cause of death that was known not plastic. It was found that higher concentrations of items found in the GI tract led to a higher rate of mortality. However, turtles can still die by only ingesting a single piece of plastic. For example, two animals in the study ingested one of like one single piece of plastic but resulted in mortality due to problems of gut perforation and impaction. Some limitations that I found with this study were that the necropsy seems to be a good method for this research. However, this study utilized database from strandings and other necropsy data which I thought was confusing instead of utilizing their own data to make conclusions on. I think that the data would have been better if there were data on all species of sea turtles to be able to identify which species are more at risk due to their behavior and foraging habit habits. I also think the study could have been stronger had it used multiple locations. The analysis throughout the study was slightly confusing and hard to follow without really dissecting the information given in the figure descriptions as well as the main text. I included that historical stranding data as a limitation because depending on how dated it is, the results may not be reliable any longer. Lastly, I did appreciate the common identifiers that are often used in other studies I have found while researching this topic. My next study that I chose to analyze is titled Microplastic Ingest Ingestion Ubiquitous in Marine Turtles by Duncan et al. 2018. This study included three different study sites of Atlantic, Mediterranean, and Pacific. The Atlantic study site had a sample size of 30 with four different species. The Mediterranean study site had a sample size of 56 with two species. And the Pacific study site had a study size of 16 with five species. This study included all seven species of sea turtles. The methods involved necropsy and biometric parameters of curved carapace length taken. Overall, the study objectively examined the types and colors of plastics that were common in the turtle's GI tract. For this study, I used figure 2, which depicts the number of plastic particles ingested in all the species of marine turtles across the three ocean basins used in this study. The black line is the mean number of particles, and this study notes that 100 milliliters was analyzed per turtle irrespective to size, so the number should not be overinterpreted. For the Atlantic site, loggerhead sea turtles was 8, green was 10, leatherback was 2, and Kemp's Ridley was 10. In the Mediterranean site, the loggerhead turtle was 22 and green turtle was 34. Lastly, the Pacific site had three loggerheads, seven greens, four flatbacks, two hawksbill, and one olive ridley. According to this graph, the levels appear to be highest in turtles from the Mediterranean. However, the sample sizes are not consistent as well as species diversity. The Mediterranean site had the most samples as well as included more of the different species types. As I previously mentioned, this study focused a lot on the type and color of plastic ingested by the sea turtles by site location. The graph depicts the type of plastic, such as fiber, fragments, and beads, in mean and standard error percentage. The white represents the Atlantic location, the light gray is Mediterranean, and the dark gray is Pacific. The X on the graph represents no detections. So overall, the majority of these were fibers at all three study sites, followed by fragments, and lastly, microbeads. Um, the circle graphs labeled by location represent the color distinction found ingested by the turtles. Fibers represented several of the 11 color categories for plastic. However, the fibers were primarily blue or black in all sites, following blue or black color. Um, red and clear were the most found ingested. In conclusion for this study, particles were identified in every individual of the study. 
Plastic was found throughout all the species of sea turtles at each location. The types varied among sites, however. Fibers were primarily classified as majority of the impact at all sites. Lastly, despite varying sample sizes as well as varying species diversity throughout each location, it was suggested that the Mediterranean lo location was more prone to higher ingestion rates than the Atlantic or Pacific site. Limitations that I found for this study were that the sample sizes were small and unvaried. This study was more focused on type of plastic and color, when I suppose this focus makes sense so that changes can be made in order to ban certain plastic types that are most harmful to the species. I do believe that necropsy is the best method for these types of studies. Most supporting studies that I found for this topic required the necropsy process. It is important to utilize this method in order to determine the cause of death regardless of if, if it was plastic ingestion. I believe that ingestion has a big part in the plastic problem with marine life. In another study done by Duncan, they focused on diet selectivity that I thought was informative since that can be a key factor in consumption of plastic. Additionally, studying foraging ranges can be beneficial. I think that studying range by specific species type to determine what type and abundance of plastics are most prone to cause harm is another way to study this topic. And these are my references with the bold ones being my main studies. I hope that you found this presentation informative and learned some new information about sea turtles and the harm that plastic has on them. Please let me know if you have any questions. And then I also have photo references. Thanks guys.